Hello, my name is Jeff Rolka. Thank you for checking out my video. We have a question about twang and cry mode. What is your opinion of vocal manipulation or exaggerations like twang or cry mode and other exaggerated sounds? I know they can help with compression and thinning out the vocal cords, but some teachers are against these closed sounds as they can feel tight in the throat if good vowel alignment, open throat technique, and breath support is not established first so that you have a solid foundation before adding exaggerated sounds. So the question is framed from the perspective of one who is adding these affectations later, but it sounds as if they may not yet have vowel alignment uh, and good apogeo breath management. Now, if that's the case, and your vowel alignment is coming along, I might suggest you stick with it until you really do get a nice established alignment of your vowels. It will serve you so well, and it makes aspects of singing with different affectations kind of trivial once you've developed the control to have vowels align properly, because that's easier to do than making adjustments to vowels so that they are consistent. So in other words, once you've learned to have good vowel alignment, you will have obtained the control to do twanging and crying and all that other kind of stuff far more easily than if you haven't learned the control and the apogeo breath management that's associated with it uh, in your singing voice to have good vowel alignment. There is another aspect to this, however, and that is that these are hyperglottic exercises a lot of the time, which means that they are asking the vocalist to induce more tension around the vocal fold in order to make the affected sound. And this is frequently done with vocalists who are singing with too much air in their thyroarytenoid dominant singing voice. So for example, if I were here and you asked me, let's say here actually, if I were here and you asked me to sing an arpeggio with we and I sang we, 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 you might say, okay, well, okay, so good on the pitch there, you're doing all right, but can you, can you like make the sound fuller? Yeah, of course I can. We, 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 we. No, 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 I don't mean that. And, and you know, as a teacher, I can't point to anything on you and say like, you need to adduct the vocal fold. That's what, that's what I need to do there. I need to adduct my vocal fold more. But I wanna ask the vocalist to do this in a way where they only induce as much tension as is absolutely necessary. And that's the thing. I never want to suggest, I, I avoid using words like squeeze, tension, force. You get the idea, I hope, from those examples. Anything that sounds like you're flexing too hard or overly much can, in the long run, be counterintuitive. So making a sound is something you, you don't have to see it. I don't have to use words that are perhaps confusing or might create problems later. And it oftentimes does the job for us. So I could say, all right, I want you to put a little a little cry into that. Oi, 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 like that. Oi, 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 oi. And that will help them get the vocal folds more adducted. And then you can say, okay, hey, did you hear how the air was gone a little bit? What does that feel like? What's the internal physical experience feel like? And hopefully, it, not, it might not go quite that quickly. Be nice if it did. But if it doesn't, that's okay too. You just want to keep moving forward. So good vowel alignment. There are those who would say you shouldn't go anywhere until you get your vowels aligned. And I'm not one of those people because I think that after a certain point, starting to, and I'm specifically thinking about vowel modification in the zona de passaggio. Once you've gotten 
where the vowels are aligned pretty close in the thyroarytenoid dominant singing voice, the chest voice, then starting to move into vowel modification can in fact intensify the attention that the vocalist is placing on the connections in the vowels, the way that they're sounding similar or dissimilar, and help them get to where they really are aligning well. So I don't expect it to be perfect in the chest voice, in the thyroarytenoid dominant singing voice, before starting to move into vowel modifications. But it is my experience that it all goes a little bit more quickly when you're about 80, 85% of the way there, and then you start moving into vowel modifications, or in the case of this question, twang and cries and different things like that. I do hope that helps. Thank you, those of you who are subscribers to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Would really appreciate it if you would choose to do so. And an even bigger thank you to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate the support. Thank you. Until next time, take really good care of your voices, enjoy singing, and hopefully we'll see you again. Bye. <laughs>